Wow! In case you didn't catch the news, Apple announced Mountain Lion to be released later this summer. So in a few months' time, uh, you're going to have an operating system on, uh, well, OS X. That's an upgraded experience. Really, not a replacement, but an augmentation of what you've uh, known uh, for, at least uh, to this point, with OS X. See, it's not called Mac OS X anymore. It's just OS X outright. Inspired by the iPad, reimagined for Mac. Now, if you take a look at the article that I linked in the video's description, I kind of gave a synopsis, an overview, really explaining what this means for people. Uh, this is, I would say, a pretty fantastic upgrade if, if you use an iOS device, like an iPod Touch, an iPad, or an iPhone. Uh, so you've got deeper integration with iCloud, synchronizing just about everything that you might have on your computer with your mobile computers, like your iPod Touch, your iPhone, or your iPad. Yes, those are computers. Messages is a new client that's available for, for OS X. You can download a beta right now if you have Lion, uh, and it integrates the, the messaging system, like the unified messenger on iOS that we saw with the release of iOS 5. That's going to be built into the desktop uh, outright, but you can try it right now. Reminders, an application you saw on uh, iOS now is going to be a desktop app. Notes as well, these things are going to synchronize. Okay, that's what makes this nice. This isn't just uh, a few apps. It's a better experience, a cohesive experience. That's what Mountain Lion is all about. Inspired by the iPad, reimagined for Mac. So they're not causing you to have to think differently or treat your Mac like it's an iPad. It's not that at all. Uh, it's just allowing you to have a more seamless experience with your data. Instead of having to manage your data here and separately here and separately here, you only have to do it in one place and then it writes it everywhere, so long as you're using applications. There's a notification center. That's uh, I, Part of it is kind of ripped off Growl, if you're familiar with that tool on OS X for notifications. Uh, share Sheets, kind of a uh, little update. I mean, it allows you to more easily share content in an application that supports it. Uh, Twitter integration, Game Center integration, which is quite interesting. So are we going to see more games for OS X come into the App Store for the Mac? I'm guessing yes. So for anybody who would sit there and say, well, the uh, Mac isn't good for gaming, well, wouldn't you like to have something like Game Center elsewhere? You know, a unified experience no matter where you are playing the games. So now the idea is you can have an iOS game and a, a Mac-based game through the App Store and be able to play your friends and gain achievements no matter how you happen to be playing the game. It's a unified experience. Uh, AirPlay mirroring, yeah, let me try it again. AirPlay mirroring is also interesting, much like AirPlay on an iOS device. Essentially, if you have an Apple TV, you can beam what is ever on your screen to the TV without configuring anything. Nice, wireless, easy. It's so simple, and that's the whole idea. Technology isn't getting more difficult to use, folks. It's getting easier. Gatekeeper is something that really is for those of you who know people who are their own worst enemy when it comes to software. How many times have you gone and looked at a computer to realize, wow, you installed some software you shouldn't have installed? Happens a lot, especially for those who don't know what they're doing with computers. And let's face it, there are a lot more non-geeks in the world than geeks. Well, Gatekeeper is an option that you can set so that you only authorize apps downloaded through the App Store, through uh, publishers who are vetted, or you can just open up the floodgates and take whatever apps you want to download from anywhere. So they give you a choice. But the bottom line for the average user, this is a much more comprehensive experience if they already have the gateway drug that is an iOS device, and they were thinking, should I get a Windows computer or should I get a Mac? What's the difference? Well, the difference isn't so much price as much as it is experience. And I don't know if you knew this, but it's uh, it's, just, it's it's been said 91%, or let's just say a fair amount, okay? I'm not going to bludgeon you over the head with that statistic. 91% or a fair amount of computers being sold today that are over the $1,000 price point are max. And some people say, well, you're just paying extra for the brand. But you also may be paying extra for the quality of hardware. It's not built of plastic anymore. So if you're thinking about possibly looking into getting a Mac, an affordable one, yeah, you could go this route. And for those of you who say it's too expensive, well, the next time you go to buy anything, keep that in mind. Cost is relative. What's expensive to you may not be expensive to somebody else. And you got to think about the time that you might spend fixing something that wasn't broken to begin with or shouldn't have been broken. There are a lot of ups and downs, certainly, that will come with Mountain Lion, but I'm expecting that it is going to be available for right around $30. That's what Lion was available for, and that's a full license. It's not like some confusing scheme where... You have to buy one version or another. It's just one version that you can get. Pricing is yet to be announced. And for anybody who would be as, well, 
Someone who would question my integrity, I'm not getting paid by Apple. They kicked me out of the affiliate program. All I'm doing here is presenting you the information. You are free to do with it whatever you please. And for anybody who would say, well, I get my updates for free. You do. Windows service packs come out for free. I get point revisions for OS X, but you have to pay for the upgrade. What, you didn't pay when you went from Windows Vista to Windows 7? And don't sit there and tell me that Windows 7 was not an upgrade to Windows Vista. There's so many arguments you might throw out there, but at least try to have them hold water before you... Th you are a more complete geek if you understand not just your side of the force, but the opposite side. Uh, you owe it to yourself to pay attention to these trends because they're not going away anytime soon. Take a look at the article that I crafted for you on LockerNome.com, giving you my analysis. It's linked in the uh, video's description here below. Uh, you know, I, I know this is a, it's big news because everyone seems to be uploading videos about it, trying to get a hold of a developer preview, which you can get if you're a developer legally. And no matter how many times Chris says he isn't paid by Apple, piece, people still say he does. I, I don't know. I don't know why I even have to come out and say that I don't get paid by Apple. When I do a video about Windows, and I've already done two of them today, people don't accuse me of getting paid by Microsoft. Ugh. I think that it's good through my though my through my Apple my Apple ID I can upgrade all my Macs for one price. Exactly. I, I love that. Can't wait to run Mountain Lion on my new Mac Mini that I can get from Chris. <laughs> that Mac Mini might or might not run. It's it's an older one, uh, but it works. It's got my autograph. I don't know who's gonna get it. Who wants? This Mac Mini, I can promise you, will not run Lion or Mountain Lion. Uh, it's got a failed hard drive, but it's worth something. Less than nothing, at least at this point in time. Uh, so, you know, it just depends on what you want, what you're looking for. I think uh, OS X Lion or Mountain Lion, not Lion, Lion is the one we have now. Mountain Lion is the next one coming out, 10.8. Uh, is going to be a, a pretty decent upgrade. It's, it's incremental. It's not just software, but really sewing together of all these services that creates a comprehensive experience. Let me, just, let me just put it to you this way. I want to see something similar come from Microsoft, but Microsoft doesn't care about user experience. They just don't. They, they don't. They never really have. They're getting there, but, but they care about the Microsoft experience, not the user experience. And if the Microsoft experience equaled the Apple experience, I'd be just as happy with it. But it's not about making the user feel stupid. It's about giving them the power to do what they need to do with technology without beating them over the head with it. Uh, and I have to say that over and over again because I know it just, it's going to generate so much hate. But I think that hate for these features and the software is more jealousy than anything.